Hello everyone, uh, today we're going to be looking at some CSTARS S50 data that I kindly got from Scott, from Scott CA Astrophotography. I'll pop his uh, channel down in the description if you want to check him out. And uh, he processed the data in Cyril and I thought it would be a good idea to take a look um, with my workflow of stacking in Deep Sky Stacker and then processing in GIMP. So this is just going to be a very quick look. Um, I'm just going to do levels and curves and things on the data. So what data have we got? We've got some M101 data with a recent supernova and some M51 Whirlpool Galaxy data. Now there's only 54 minutes worth of data for M101 and very little data on M51 but it will give people an idea what to expect when they get a CSTARS S50 um, because at the moment uh, no one not many people have got these, I don't think. I don't know if anyone's beta testing them. Maybe one or two people. But let's jump into it and have a look. So I'll go into GIMP. What I did is I stacked the uh, TIFF files in Deep Sky Stacker and I found that the best settings were to use entropy weighted average. I did try stacking a number of different ways, but for this CSTARS data, entropy weighted average seemed to help. Um, and that's what you select in Deep Sky Stacker if you want to increase your dynamic range. So I'll open up my stacked image. Let's do M101 first. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Where's it gone? There we go. Okay, so it's quite small. So what I'm going to do is go to view make it larger and yeah, maybe even bigger, let's go to 100 so we can really see the galaxy now please bear in mind not only am I using software that isn't specifically dedicated to astronomy this is also in beta testing the C stars. The C stars S50 is on pre-order, but I don't think anyone's going to get hold of it until the end of August. Now um, it's been delayed a little bit whilst ZWO perfect a few things. So first of all, I want to sort of correct this background. So we'll go to color levels. Um, it's a bit greeny blue, so I can just tackle that by just shifting the red down a little bit like that. Split screen to show you the difference. Okay. And the background's really bright compared to the galaxy, so I'm going to go into levels again and just drag up, move the black point a bit. Okay. And then we'll do some stretching. So curves. So stretching anywhere at the bottom will stretch the dark data. Stretching in the middle will stretch the sort of the grey data and stretching at the top will stretch like the stars. You can probably see how that works like that and like that. So I want to bring out the galaxy. So I'm going to stretch in the middle, bring out some of that galaxy detail. Start to bring out a little bit of noise now as well. So what we'll do is we'll go back into levels, drag that up like so. And the galaxy is a little bit green. I mean, the old picture is a little bit green actually. So let's go to color balance, select shadows so it's the darker colors and just drop down the greens a bit. There we go. That's looking a bit better. Bring up the red. Ooh, no, it's too much red. That's very red. Yeah, that'll do. And one more curve. There we go. And uh, yeah, so you know, this is just a very quick look. I'm not going to go mad. You could spend, you can spend, and you do spend ages sort of tweaking things when you're post-processing images. But one thing I will show you is this new plugin that I've uh, come across, um, probably a few years too late, but it's called Gimmick. And um, I've opened a tab to show you where that's from. You can just download it from gimmick.eu and then just download it in the usual way and then just restart GIMP and then it just appears on your filters folder so click on that and it just gives you loads of options so you just got loads and loads of options now so um one i've saved a few of my favorites uh the easy skin retouch actually works quite well for smoothing out the image and you can kind of adjust how aggressively you do that by sliding the edge sensitivity so about 1.4 maybe a little bit more 
Okay, I think I'm going to go apply on that one. And okay. Cool. I think that's still slightly blue. So let's go to levels. Um, let's go to the blue tab and just tweak that slightly. Uh, your... Let's go with that. It's very slightly different. Okay, and let's zoom out just to have a quick look. I'm not going to spend too much time messing about with this because you, you just basically just want to get an idea, don't you? So one thing to note is the aspect ratio. Uh, you can see that it's quite narrow and tall. So it seems that ZWO have uh, cropped the sensor for social media purposes. So it's just ready to go on social media. Uh, but I'm used to processing kind of landscape looking pictures that are more wide than they are tall. So that, that's a that's taken a little bit of uh, getting my head around, but you can see there's plenty of detail for 54 minutes worth of 10 second exposures. And uh, I mean, cause this is, you know, m 101s not an easy object to image. Um, and you can see the supernova there and the stars look quite round and the noise isn't, considering this is just light frames, it's not bad. There were some dark frames provided, but when I stacked them, they I don't know what was going on with the dark frames, but they weren't working for me. Um, I had better success with the light frames. Um, so yeah, that's a rough idea of what the pinwheel galaxy would look like with the sea stars. You'd be collected just shy of an hour's worth of data. So let's take a look at the other data I've got now. Let's go and have a look at the Whirlpool Galaxy data. Now this is just shy of 17 minutes, so not much data at all really. So uh, bear that in mind when we're processing it. If I go up to 100, so, but you can see, we've already, just straight off the bat, we can see the entire merging spiral galaxies. We've got both the cores, and you can see the arm joining there. There's a bit of a color cast in the background. When I stacked in the sky, when I stacked in Deep Sky Stacker, as mentioned, entropy weighted average, selecting entropy weighted average was the key to bringing out the most detail. So that's a tip there for you. So let's see if we can just tweak this a little bit, bearing in mind it's only 17 minutes worth of data. So let's bring that red down on the levels a little bit. Try and make it a bit more neutral. There we go, split the screen. So hopefully that's a bit more neutral. And then we'll get rid of the light background by bringing up the black point. And you can see when I move that, is the histogram. We're gonna move it more towards the black by moving that up, you can see it moving. So if I move that there, you can see this histogram moving to the left. It's make make the make the background go darker and I think we can get get away with doing a bit more stretching on that so let's bring up whoa so that's bringing out quite a lot of detail now actually nice so okay on that and again it's brought the background up again so we're just going to slide that across again yeah that's looking good and eh, colors a bit off so Actually, I'm going to go into color balance, select shadow, just pump up the red a little bit. There we go, and pump up the blue. There we go, split screen that. I think that's a little bit better. And sometimes if you go to hue chroma, which is a word I struggle to say, and just bump that up a little bit, just makes it pop a bit more. And then we'll just address the background in the levels. Tweak the levels one more time. I said I wasn't going to faff about too much with it, but it's difficult to resist sometimes. Mm. Yeah, it's a bit blue. Let's go. Uh, drop the blue down a bit, or green up a little bit maybe. There we go. Yeah, okay. 
very quick, just very quick anyway. So let's zoom out and show you what we've got. Roughly how it would appear. So there we go. Um, oh, so I think I might have slightly clipped the background on that one. Uh, that, let's just do one more little stretch. There we go. It's a little bit dirty in the background. Let's go to our plugin gimmick. And let's try the easy skin retouch. Apply that. Let's move it out a little bit. Yeah, I think that's that's oh, it is a bit blue, isn't it? That's just, oh, I know I won't be able to resist. Let's go to let's go to the blue tab and just tweak that back down. There we go. I think that's no. Nah. Only very slightly. Mm. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'm happy with that now. That for a quick process, I think that's pretty good. So let's zoom in, show you one last time, go to 100%. So quite a lot of detail really, considering that's only just shy of 17 minutes of data. Uh, so yeah, that was a quick look at some C-Stars data, just the light frames, not too, not too much data, but it just gives you an idea and gives you an idea of the aspect ratio and how everything will look if you get a C-Stars smart telescope and you stack in Deep Sky Stacker and process in GIMP. A big thank you to my channel members and Patreons and I hope everyone enjoyed that. Just a very rough and ready video but I hope you liked it. If you liked it subscribe at the like button and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.